sit tight, everyone. As K Double would say, we have a jam packed episode. What's good? It's your boy Rico. Welcome back to another episode of Pokemon Duel. First things first, my allergies are somewhat better. My nose is now stuffed rather than runny, so I feel a little better. Uh, another thing, we have, what's, what are we in, May, June. June is coming up a couple days away. That means we need a new layout. I'm going to do a new layout every month, so please let me know in the comments below what Pokemon do you want to see as the next layout. Now, hey, we have a white booster to open, I guess, and we have this. Okay, so we'll open up this white booster. We'll open up the lock booster. I didn't even know that. And then we'll talk about this bomb that was dropped on us. <clears throat> Geodude, okay. You guys, you told me to give up on Manaphy, but we're still going to wish for Manaphy, even though Manaphy is completely irrelevant right now. Manaphy, please. Oh, actually, last night I pulled a Gallade. So, I mean, I thought that was pretty cool. And, um, oh, man, I got to sneeze. Maybe. Let's, uh, we'll get to these after we talk about the leaks. The leaks! Oh, my goodness. Well, not even leaks, but uh, the teaser. So, let's talk about the teaser. Teaser on the way. We are currently planning to hold a pre-tournament at the end of June. So we have another blitz, is what we would call it, or what I would call it, another blitz at the end of the June. The June, at the end of June. I can't wait for that, because that is fun. Um, <clears throat> to commemorate the pre-tournament, we will be holding a dual week event starting the 1st of June. Planned event support for intense battling. Finally, figures for those fearsome Pokemon will be available. First of all, look at that. Look at those figures. Now, I definitely can make this thing out right here. That's definitely a Hondoom. Like, I think it's Hondoom. But this figure, I'm not necessarily sure. Then I look at their base, and I'm like, okay, that's not an EX. That's a UX. So that's definitely Mega Hondoom. And this right here, based on the leaks, it is Mega Lucario. Here, let me show you guys the respective pictures of them, just so you guys can, can kind of get an idea. Here is Mega Hondoom. You can see these things right here. On the outside are probably his little chest piece. And then Lucario. <clears throat> you see he's got this like bandana type thing. You could definitely see these right here are his bandana. And it kind of looks like he's standing like this. I don't know if you guys can see me right now. But it kind of looks like he's standing like this. So I believe that we are going to be getting Mega Lucario and Mega Hondoom. So that's going to be pretty awesome. Uh, da, 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 special daily booster tickets a shiny Pokemon figure is coming to a gym event well the thing is we always get a shiny figure in the team match events right oh in a gym event oh in a gym event we don't get shiny figures in gym events so that did we have we I don't know thing is I'm not really expecting anything I mean we get what shiny Eevee's shiny Eevee evolutions I'm not too I don't really care about what we're gonna get but I mean unless it's I don't know. We'll see. Hopefully, it's a shiny EX and it has a different ability. So I don't know. Maybe that. Maybe it is something that we're looking forward to. Um, <clears throat> Pokemon figures that will get you stoked for dueling are assembling in time boosters. Okay, maybe we're getting a new addition to the time boosters that are somewhat stoked about. Uh, June features figures include abilities that cause battle opponents to become burned. Abilities that increase the damage fire type Pokemon deal for each burned Pokemon on the field. Oh, man, I really... That's probably like a haunt, Mega Hondoom ability. I don't know. I don't know, man. <clears throat> Get ready to enjoy these abilities in a burn day party featuring Arcanine and Ho-Oh and more. So, I mean, it looks like they're pertaining to fire-type decks, which is pretty cool. I, it can only make me... Uh, get excited about the future of Pokemon Duel and what they're going to do for Ice type, Rock types, and all the other types that are kind of irrelevant right now. The timing of events may change without notice. Images may not be final. Boom, we hope you are enjoying Pokemon Duel. So, what do you guys, how do you guys feel about this leaks? I mean, we're getting a Mega Lucario. I know everybody was super hyped about Mega Lucario, so that means we're probably going to be seeing a Fire and Steel type banner. Now, this kind of makes me upset because of that. Because we got the Mega Hondoom, because we got the Mega Lucario, I think again that leaves Aegislash in the dust. I don't, I don't, I don't know if we're gonna get Aegislash. <laughs> That's all I really want, man. I just hope they deliver on Aegislash because I feel like they've been uh, holding out on us, and we've all, I think a lot of people really want Aegislash, and I feel like that was the same way with Scizor, and then when Scizor was delivered, eh, 
So, I don't know, but then we got that huge major uh, buffing. All right. So, we concluded the gym cup, the fire gym cup. How did you guys like it? This was the deck that I was running after I got Hero Um I did fairly well. I think I almost had 40 wins. I was trying to get that 11 streak because I yet again did not get the invincible streak. Feels bad, man. I got to nine. Whoa. Um, but let's open up these boosters. Maybe we can pull something great in these. Ooh, rare. Okay. Magmar. No, not what I was looking for. All right. So what I actually wanted to do to, for you guys, I wanted to show you four duels. Four duels. Now, if you saw my team, let's take a look at my team again. Yes, I am rocking the Mega Blaziken. And I wasn't right doing Combuskin Blaziken to Mega Blaziken. It was just Blaziken to Mega Blaziken. And you guys know how I feel about Blaziken. Overall, uh, it was probably 50-50 where Blaziken did things that I wanted him to do, and then other times he either m rolled miss or jet kick or just something completely that was that I didn't want him to roll. But <laughs> enough of me uh, ranting. Let's go in. Let's take a look at those matches. All right, give me one second. I'll be right back. All right, guys, this first match we call it Blaziken. You're actually doing what I want you to do. We're taking a look at from Alvin's point of view. He's got the Vibrava. He's got like a he's got a deck that I think um, <clears throat> is gonna help him against the rush. He rushes me with the Entei. I usually counter with the uh, the Arcanine because Arcanine has I have winning rolls against uh, his Entei because his Entei does not have any chains. <clears throat> so now we got the Blaze. And then he covers my entry point with the Chandelure, and I'm like, all right, Blaziken, I need you to take out this uh, Entei. We need to hit the Cyclone Kick. So I DC here. I go straight for him because I need some more Mons on the board. And he rolls his purple, of course. And I'm like, oh, my, here we go. Can we please get the check kick? What? Blaziken, did you listen to me? He rolls the Blaze Kick, and I move two steps away right next to the goal and my opponent does not bring up the vibrava and that's exactly what he needed to do and then you know exactly what we're gonna do we are gonna mega evolve we're gonna go mega blaziken and we're gonna cheese for the win so i know that was just a short match but i wanted to show you guys a match where blaziken actually like came through i was like wow okay all right give me one second we're gonna jump right into the next video all right guys we are back and now there was one problem that i ran into when we were when we had this gym cup okay i'm gonna stop it real quick and we're gonna talk about it the good thing is we are at my point of view. So the thing is, the main problems here was this figure, Agron, and also this figure, Terragon. Terragon hitting for a whopping 120 to 150. It was a huge problem. Most Terragons had chains, and my Arcanine does not have a chain. So it kind of gave me problems. But if you take a look at my deck, the whole premise of this deck is to burn figures and then use Arcanine's sweet ability, the Flame Turbine. So... He he burns. He burns when he mega evolves. He burns and he yeah, he just he just kind of goes through figures. I think I could have done without uh, Moltres in this uh, in this event. But uh, here we go. Let's go ahead and watch the match. Let's watch how many mistakes I make as well. <clears throat> and there is that uh, there is that Terrakin, and I'm like, this is a perfect opportunity. You should have opened with somebody else. Now I'm gonna completely burn you, and then what I could do is I can attack you the following turn with Arcanine, and you are basically useless unless there was guys there was plenty of times where i would attack into a burn figure i'm like i have winning rolls unless they roll a miss they roll a miss they rolled a miss and i'm like are you i got heated a couple times <clears throat> oh man i can't wait for i can't wait for all the buffs all right so we have one burn figure which is good we can actually uh, but see, this guy has a problem. So what I have to do here is I move the lamp in because I want to try and burn the uh, the Agron, and then I can attack with the Arcanine. Boom! I get the Wisp. I'm like, all right, cool. That's one thing done. I call this the one-two punch. Back in the day, I called. Uh, <coughs> oh yeah, I made a stupid mistake in this game. I called uh, Shuppet it the one-two punch, getting the Wisp and then KOing them on. But now, now that you know that's long gone, we call. Anything that can burn, plus Arcanine, the one-two punch. The uh, Agron is burned. Now I can attack him. He hits his large Iron Tail, which is good. Now all I need is an attack 
we respin, boom, we get the extreme speed, and GG boys to aggro. <coughs> I don't know why my opponent X attack here. Like, I mean, he was. I don't know. I guess he was fearing he was gonna get his uh, his gold, but we burn him, which is good. And then here, I had options. I could take the entry point. I could DC against the Turakin. I felt like Turakin would have been the better choice because then he has to cover up. And then I could take the entry point the following turn, and I can attack the uh, Infernape. <coughs> but there get there it goes again. That sweet ability. Get the extreme speed again, and then he's going to have to cover up with his uh hoe. The only problem is he does have the heat ran on deck. So I take the entry point here, but I don't attack. I don't know why. I guess I was afraid. I don't know, man. I don't attack again. I don't know what I'm doing, and boom. Yeah. I oh yeah, I was gonna try and set up this around on the, the infernape. That's what that's what the plan was, but I was completely blind. I was wasn't even paying attention, and then that happened and I was pretty upset about it. But I'm like, all right, we have winning rolls against Ho-Oh, so let's attack the Ho-Oh. Making mistakes, man. And I lose him once again, but my opponent this time goes and attacks, and he risks me surrounding him. I hit the Branded, and guess what? That is GG, boys, to Heat Ram. <coughs> That's fine. You can do that. We can take the extra point, because we do not want to see Agron back on the board. Did I attack here? I actually remember this match. I remember this match. A good thing he hit the Mog Punch, or wasn't the Mog Punch? Whatever the attack was that makes him move, claim the previous uh, step. That was actually really good. Otherwise, he would have surrounded my Moltres, but he, I guess he got to do it anyway. And again, we are in a uh, we are in a quite the predicament. I don't know why my opponent. That was a, that was a huge mistake for my opponent. He definitely should have run the Agron because Agron would have been a problem in the center of the the board. But now he moved him on. Now he only has one MP, and now I can attack because it is burned. The one-two punch, boom. <coughs> and yeah, I don't. I don't. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But we win that game. All right, guys. We are going to jump in to game number three. Give me one second. We'll be right back. All right, guys. We are back with game number three. And I actually want to pause it. I want to talk about something really, really quick. Take a look at my opponent. Look what I'm playing against here. <clears throat> we are playing against a Ultra Beast deck. Now, do you guys remember when Dio... Deoxys was prevalent, and even in the Gym Cups, we still saw Dio decks. Well, that, I mean, the Ultra Beast, they are, they're, they're kind of a problem. And I did see, I think I saw two Ultra Beast decks in the match, or in the team, or what am I talking about, in the gym. Um, I think I went, I think I went one for one. I won one, lost one. Uh, but we're actually going against, I believe his name was Ian. So let's watch this match, see how it unfolds. He opens up with, uh, I'm going to talk about that right now. He opens up with Arcanine, which was a great play because all of my figures are Fire Mons. I can't counter him here because he can take the entry point the following turn. And everything, I mean, did he have the chain? Yeah, he had the chain. He outright beat every single one of my mods. If I opened up with Arcanine, he could DC, boom, GG, boys. If I opened up with Blaziken, I mean, Blaziken, we all know how Blaziken is. So I have to play defensive right off the bat. So that was a really, really good play there. <coughs> Brings up the Aggron to stop. Ugh, dude so bad but it looks like he's being a little passive with it which is fine so I'm gonna take entry point I'm like if you're not gonna be aggressive I will be aggressive I'll take the entry point before you take my entry point the reason why I brought Lampin up there I was like because if I hit my white he does become burn but I get the branded feels bad man so now I either have to cover up or have to bring on my other Lampin which I do brings up his uh Nihiligo he pulls the switch here, and I'm like, oh, great. I hate this thing. I hate Celestia so bad. So I'm like, that's fine. I'm going to Mega here. I'm going to burn you, and I'm going to take the entry point, and I just hope we survive this roll. Can we please survive this roll, which was actually a terrible play. Oh, no, it wasn't necessarily a terrible play, but we survive here, which is good. But he has the RK9, which I totally forgot comes off the bench or can come off the bench. If it is, if the entry point is covered by a fire type mon, so a huge mistake by me. And I was like, man, 
That was such a good play. Wait, no, it wasn't. So I max revive. I feel like I need Blaze again. I feel like Blaze is somewhat of the uh, win condition here. But I attack. I go straight after this uh, Nihiligo. I don't know why I thought Blaze was a win condition. Actually, I don't. That's that's weird. I don't know. I don't know. But uh, the Nihiligo is burned, so I kind of want to attack it. But then he brings up his Feromos, and I'm like, oh, what am I doing here? And he baits me so hard. He moves up his Nihiligo. I'm like, all right, you're burned. I'm gonna attack you. I have the rolls. GG boys. Boom. I hit him. And I'm like, oh my god. He, my opponent was so smart. He baited me so hard. Because now he attacks with fair most of the following turn. Because I totally forgot that Nihiligo does it. It goes into Ultra Space. And I'm like, dude, no. And he DCs and he goes straight after me with his fair most. And I'm like, that's, I, at that point, I already mentally, I gave up. Because I knew he was going to hit the call signal. And he does. He brings back the Nihiligo on my entry point and surrounds. <sighs> and surrounds me. And takes me to the PC because the Mighty Sphere. And there's Blaziken doing Blaziken things. <coughs> and right now, like, like I said, I was I was completely and morally defeated. I was like, I don't have any options. There's not much things I could do. He lands the fly and he gets to cheese me with the sales dealer. So good game, Ian. That was, uh, I just wanted to show how bad he baited me. Ultra Beast users are so good. They're so good. Like they, they know how to play their decks. They it it makes me jealous. Maybe like I have I have all the pieces now. I kind of want to start running them, but I don't. I just I don't know. I feel like it's too gimmicky, and I just I don't. It, it to me, I don't want to say you're like deal users, but like it's kind of like the deal deck where I'm like I don't want to run that deck. But it's actually really creative. So I don't know. All right, give me one second, guys. I'll be right back. We have the last and final fourth game. All right, guys, we are back, and this is against Brent. Now, I was streaming when I got this match, and Brent was in the chat, and then he wasn't talking for a little bit because I was playing him, and then he came back in chat, and we discussed the game. So let's kind of see uh, what mistakes he made, what mistakes I made, if we even made mistakes, or if we could have played better. But he goes right after me in DC straight into uh, my, uh, why can't I think of your name? The Chandelure, and I mean, he had the he had the chains. I I, I kind of I'm I'm debating if I want to chain my. He didn't have the hurl jump here, so I was like, this is probably a fair play. And I think he has the Mega Charizard. Brings up Combuskin, and I'm like, all right, we I don't want this Combuskin anywhere near anything, so I have to DC here. I, and I totally forgot that he has this monster, and I was like, oh my god, dude, it, this could already be bad. But he actually lands the night day, so I'm like, all right, please, please. Well, okay, we burn him. That's that's somewhat good. <coughs> and now he's gonna he's gonna mega zard. Oh, I remember this. I remember this play actually. So he, he mega evolves and he takes my extra point and he attacks my Terrakion. Let's 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 stop. Let's stop and talk about this for a second. So Brent here has my entry point. He does not need to attack the Terrakion. Because what I have to do is I have to move my... Um Wait, did I? No, I still have gold block. But what I would have done is I would have had to move my my uh, Arcanine back to, the, back to the goal. And then if I would have done that, he could have taken the entry point with the Zoro. Had I not, had I just... Um Had I goal blocked with the Terrakion, he could have... Because I was burned before, wasn't I? No, wait. No, I wasn't. I wasn't burned before. But had I goal blocked there... Well, actually, maybe maybe that, is, maybe that was the right play to make. Because if I goal block, he could have brought something else on. And then I probably would have been aggressive with the RK9. I don't know. What do you guys think? It was just a very fortunate, very fortunate, unfortunate roll for him. But I do get the roll. And now I can take the extra point here. And he double chances. I was like, okay. I mean, it's 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 risky, but you he actually has winning rolls. And I rolled a miss. Actually, you know what? Arcanine rolled a lot of misses. Um, I will say that. <coughs> I figured he was gonna take the entry point the following turn, so I had to be uh, defensive. Now I got. Oh, dude, he was a problem as well. This was a this was a fair. Uh, 
That was fair. I agree with that play. I definitely agree with that play. So I DC here. I want to go straight after this uh, Reg Rock. If we get him off the board, we're in a really good position. He gets his hammer arm. I'm like, Blaze, please, Blaze, come through, Blaze. Boom, Blaze comes through. That's twice Blaze has come through in this video. Um, he came, like I said, I would say 50-50. He either came through or he did not come through, and he has to go block here. I still have the max revive. I think I, oh, I don't max revive. I definitely should have maxed revive right there with RK9, and then I would have attacked. But I'm actually no, I wouldn't know. Well, yeah, because he's burned. I definitely there. Yeah, I should have. I should have maxed. I should have done that earlier. So, but anyway, I go after him now. I why did I not attack there? I, what am I doing? I, what am I doing? I don't know. I should have attacked there. So many misplays. And uh, ouch. I was actually happy Brant took the evolution because I was like, I know, I, if I know Blaze, Blaze is completely unreliable here. Yeah, huge mistakes here. I, I did, a, I def, I don't, what was I thinking? I definitely should have attacked earlier. I don't know, maybe it was on stream. I was scared. I have no idea. I have no idea. But now my Moltres is burnt. I go Blaze here, Mega Blaze, and I'm trying to get that Wall Crusher so I can remove the Heat Ram behind the uh, Zoro. But I get the Night Days, or he gets Night Days, I get the Flare Blitz, which is good. The only problem is I have a huge white that is gone. I'm like, Blaze, Mega Blaze, come through for me. We can get this, GG boys. Boom, we get the Wall Crusher. Survive to roll. The game should have been o over a lot earlier. I definitely should have attacked the Zora while he was on the goal. I don't know why I didn't do that. But we, we were actually in a predicament there, and I'm actually glad we came back and won that match the way we did. Because, uh, it, like I said, we were it could have been bad. So, good games to Brent. Unfortunately, things didn't work out for you in the early game. If you would have taken the Serac on, it probably would have been GG boys for me. But then I, too, made a lot of mistakes. So, um, but we're, that's going to do it for today, guys. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed that episode. And like I said, please let me know in the comments below what you want to see for the next layout. What Pokemon do you want to see? The most votes or the most Pokemon mentioned in the comments will make it that even if it's Weedle. But until then, guys, ladies and gentlemen, peace.